All right, in this next part, we're going to go calculate what the displacement is that is related to the redundant reaction. That's going to be the flexibility coefficient that we have here, right? The displacement at 1 due to the unit load being placed at 1. And then we're going to scale all that up by the unknown but actual value of Vy. Right? And so this case is a simply supported beam with a point load, but that point load is asymmetrically placed. So when you go look in your beam tables, you got to be a little careful here. We don't want case 3, we want case 4. I think I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, we're not redoing this video. We're just going to charge ahead. All right, so here we've got this bottom case, and we want that expression for the displacement along the beam length. The problem here is that they only give us the functional expression to the left of the load. So, if fortunately for us, where we want the displacement is right where the load is located, so that's okay. But if for some reason we wanted it to the right, we'd have to just do a flippy flop and play around with those dimensions. It's easy to get that all screwed up, what the value of A and B is, get flip-flopped, all that kind of stuff. Really easy to mess that up. But you rarely find a beam table that has all of the expressions worked out for both regions um, because, of course, the shear diagram has a discontinuity. The MoMA diagram has a, a slope discontinuity in it, all because of this point load, and it's a pain to do all this stuff. All right? So just keep all that in mind when you're playing around here. So that was case four from the table E2 out of the Craig textbook, right? And so if I take that expression, divide by the value of P, because I don't know what that is, then we're gonna we're gonna evaluate it at x equal to twenty, the span length is thirty five, and the distance over to the load is twenty, which was also our value of x in this case, and the leftover um, dimension was B equal to 15. And then this is our expression. Notice the only difference between this expression and what's in the table is that value of P. I've divided out by that. Again, this is per load, unit load here, so that's why we're doing it. You could um, obviously put P equal to 1 into this expression. I'll show you why I don't do that here in just a second. It's a matter of semantics is what it really comes down to, right? So we got bx over 6lei times this whole quantity here, l squared minus b squared minus x squared. Put the numbers in carefully. Really easy to get those messed up. I know I did a couple of times, right? And so you put all that in there, and you come up with a value of 857.14 over ei in this specific case. Now, again, note the units that we really have here. Right? In the numerator, when you have the value of P sitting in here, you're going to have kilonewton meter cubed. But because I divide it out by the P, kilonewton over kilonewton, right, then this has actually got units of 857.14 meter cubed as a net. And you're like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Remember, this is the displacement at 1 due to a unit load at 1. What I'm ultimately going to do with this stuff is put this into a compatibility equation, right? Delta B of that original is equal to the sum of the parts, right? So this is the displacement at B due to the actual loads after I removed a redundant reaction. And now I'm putting this back in. And unit-wise, i got to have length equals length plus a total length. Thing, right? But BY has units of force. So this displacement is the displacement due to a unit load. So per load. And that's what I'm getting out of this little handling of dividing this expression of V by P rather than just putting in there P equals 1 kilonewton. Because then I would have had it that. And then I would have multiplied by BY of kilonewton. I would have had some weird kilonewton squared business. Really, that kilonewton for the by is dividing out by that kilonewton in the denominator, leaving us that little business right there. Subtle little thing. That's just how, though, you are more precise about keeping all the uh, units correct here. All right, so that's our compatibility equation that we're using to solve for our unknown reaction. Delt and uh, in this case, delta B is going to turn out to be zero. Delta BO was downwards, and then it comes over to the other side of the equation, so it's a minus times a minus, right? The flexibility coefficient here 
was upwards. The reaction was assigned positive upwards. And so we get positive over positive. That tells us when we come up with the number of By equals 444.79 kilonewtons, if the positive direction means that that's consistent with what we had set up. So it actually is acting upwards, which totally makes uh, sense, right? That's the way it should be going. And our next step, we'll go calculate all the other response quantities that are typically of value and of interest.